Ruben Torres, is a first-year head coach at Marlin High School, and they have a team that is blossoming right in front of maybe not only Coach Torres' eyes, but others. We've mentioned, obviously, Sheila Henderson. They have really done an amazing job at Marlin. I noticed that uh, Trajan Butler uh, was uh, going to camp, I think, at A&M. Obviously, Gullett, we mentioned him, and he's going to visit Alabama. And so they've got something going on, and both of those are juniors. We're now joined by Ruben Torres, first-year head coach at Marlin. Ruben, uh, listen, I mean, you got some, obviously, not just those two, but give us a story. What intrigued you about Marlin and the fact you have that kind of a roster at the level you play? Well, I think the first thing that intrigued me about Marlin was all the change that was going on at the top uh, with a very high energy, high expectation superintendent that brought in a tremendous all-star team at the top academically and just the vision that that he had and that he uh, promotes day in and day out was, was extremely exciting. And, and Marlin's been a little down. And so I think when you go in there and you have a lot of confidence in yourself and, and you see the talent there, it's very intriguing to see how great you really are as a coach and to see if you can turn this thing around in a relatively short amount of time. Is there any comparison to what you had when you were coaching at El Paso, what you did with those programs to what you're trying to do at Marlin? You know, the the only thing that's similar is the, the first head job I ever took, there was a lot of uh, negativity and a lot of naysayers saying that, you know, you didn't have the kids, uh, the academics were bad. You're never going to win there. And, you know, as a coach and as a competitor, you, you really take that and kind of get a, a chip on your shoulder. And so, you know, do you, do you go a little harder? Absolutely. Um, as far as the athletes go, um, I've, I've been blessed to coach some really good athletes, but the concentration of talent and the ability that's right there at Marlin High School is uh, something I've never had the opportunity to, to really be around. You mentioned the changes at the top. Is is Marlin a community that, I mean, if, if you strip away all the, the nuts and bolts of it, just, I mean, had a lot of things going for it. They just needed they just needed the right push. I strongly believe so, and I think they also needed somebody that was going to come in and be bold and set the bar high and not take no for an answer. And from, from our superintendent to our athletic director and, and his entire cabinet, the 100% focus is the kids and, and giving our kids the absolute best, regardless of if we're at Marlin High School or somewhere up in Dallas. We believe strongly in kids and we do this for kids. And that's something that's not just lip service. You see it day in and day out. Uh, a lot of tough decisions have, have had to have been made, but they've been bold. And I believe that our community is buying in. I know that our student athletes are. And, and there's a great positive energy going on throughout Marlin, Texas. All right, so you uh, you take over. David Haynes was there. Obviously, they were able to make the move last year to get a little bit better. They've had a couple of times, but it's been, as you mentioned, it's been a long time. What do you see in the eyes of those young men that you're coaching now and the belief that they have that it's time now to take Marlin back to the playoffs? I think I see a group of young men who've never been really told how great they can be. Or have, or have had adults show them, uh, what, what it's going to take to be great and, and to be with them through it every step of the way. And so the buy-in was a lot quicker than what I expected, but they're showing up every day. Uh, you see it in their eyes and you see them going out to these camps with confidence. Uh, I don't necessarily know if that was the case in the past. Um, they completely support each other and push each other. And as a coach, when that type of environment is there, you know, you just kind of sit back and watch them hold each other, hold each other accountable and compete every single day in, in a positive environment. And I think that's what you're seeing with our kids being proud and confident to say, you know, I'm going to the Texas Tech camp. I'm going to go to the Alabama camp. I'm going to be at A&M this week. I'm going up to TCU. So I believe that as adults, we're giving them and as coaches, we're giving them the tools to understand we're going to coach you up and give you the tools to be confident and to go out there and showcase yourself and give yourself an opportunity to do something that a lot of people have told them they can't do. Coach, how big have some of the smiles been with uh, guys coming back from these camps holding you know, big-time offers? Just how, how has that positivity spread throughout the team? Oh, I, I tell you what, seeing everybody, you know, it's contagious, and it's what you would expect when um, 
Well, I guess you could go two ways with it. Sometimes, I, you know, you, you see other people have success and, there, and there's a lot of hate and jealousy. Um, these guys are so tight and, and such a good group of kids and, and close friends, um, cousins that, you know, they all pull for one each other. And, and I don't know who's smiling, you know, bigger, me or them. But, <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I was able to go down there and watch the Baylor camp with a couple of our other coaches and parents, um, just to see them having success. And then, of course, the offer came at the end and um, just, you know, well-deserved, well-earned. Um, you know, Darian Gallette has definitely put in all the work and, and Trey Jean and Kajamari Wilson and some other guys that you'll be hearing as this year goes on. Um, they're, they're doing the work. And so they know what it takes and they're going out there against the best. And I think proving to themselves that, you know, they are just as good. What will that do for your freshman and junior high kids to see guys getting offers that weren't really come in the last few years? I think it gives them hope. I think that instead of kids looking to move to another town 12 miles up the road or 20 miles down the road, that they understand that there's something great that's taking place and, and it's only going to get greater. And so the, the fear of us losing kids because of academics or, or poor athletic programs um, those fears have been laid to rest, and and you know Team Marlin is here. Uh, we're making huge strides academically, and, and and obviously out here on the football field. Well, we're a fan of Sheila Henderson. Uh, we've known her since uh, her son was recruited to play for Baylor uh, under Matt Rule, and I've gotten to talk to Sheila a few times. Doctor Henson, uh, Daryl Henson, with what he's doing as well. Uh, so they we we've told the story. Now, how shocked or. You knew this, I guess, when you were interviewing for the job to have the kind of players you're talking about visiting these different campuses and not just Gullet, not just Butler, but others. But they're visiting Division One campuses in a school the size of Marlin. Well, I, I think that, um, and, and I've had this talk with a few people, and, and it was even something that I had said, you know, when I was going through the interview process is that, you know, winning leadership, talent, and doing things right, there is no, you know, 6A, 5A, 4A attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the college coaches in the state of Texas and, and in the Power Five, they do their job. And, and they, they don't look at the A classification. They look at the player and are they being coached? Are they great people? And obviously, athletically, can they hold their own? Um, the first time I ever saw our kids in person was seeing them play a basketball game. And... Right then and there, I knew that we had something special athletically. And as we've gotten into the off season and the weight workouts and, and putting together our track program, you know, that was something that Marlon had kind of fallen off in track. And with the support of Dr. Henson and the leadership of Mrs. Uh, Henderson uh, and getting our track program going and, and then making a run at, at state, I think it just started to, you know, to roll like a domino effect. And, and the kids are ri riding the wave and working in the off season. Whereas, you know, that may have not, not been taking place. And so, you know, to be successful, you know, successful people all do pretty much very similar things. Strong off-season program, character development, accountability, expectation. But I think more importantly than all of those things is, is the ability to teach and coach and guide these young men throughout the process. And, again, they bought in and, and all, the, all the credit in the world goes to them for everything that they've achieved and the buzz that they've created for themselves and the way that they've gone out there and conducted themselves and marketed themselves. Um, so it's been, I mean, there, there's not a day that's gone by where I'm not just smiling ear to ear and excited uh, about what's going on. Did you, uh, did you study the history of Marlin football and know that there were glory years that they've been to the playoffs? I know that coach Hensley or Benny Hewitt or, even Stephen Hodge took them. And I know last year they, I think, went because even with COVID, they had a shortened season. Uh, but as far as winning seasons, it's been few and far between. But th that stretch where they were, I think it was 91 wins in eight years from 98 to 2006. And, of course, played for a state title in three, 2003. Did you kind of know about and study that history or talk about it? Yes, sir, absolutely. You know, when you, when you first start Googling Marlin football, you see a picture of the great Jerry Malone come up. Yep. And, um, of course, throughout the town of Marlin and even outside of Marlin, uh, you know, the, the legacy that he's left and uh, the winning seasons and the great teams and, and the players that left Marlin, you know, Motkins, who's uh, 
Uh, you know, sure. the older brother is, is the coach for the running back coach for the Denver Broncos. The younger brother is a DB coach for uh, Texas Christian TCU. So the, the history, uh, the players, uh, the people, they, they've been there. And for for whatever reason, they, they took a big dip. But I don't believe that the, the talent ever left. And I just think it, it was it was perfect timing. At least for me, it was perfect timing to to come to a place that was unknown to me, but had a rich history and and a town of people and, and a leadership team that are just starving for success at the highest level. Hey, uh, Ruben, thanks for your time. Good luck going forward. Good luck with all the young men having an opportunity to go to these camps. Uh, we had Trajan Butler on last year when he was a built Ford tough player of the week. Uh, in the state of Texas, you know, you have names like Jeremy Sanders. You meant they had that great run. They lost, I saw them and covered them in a state championship game in Tyler when they played Atlanta. Lost the game, but they had that great run. So there, it, it's good to see the momentum. I know you still have to carry it over. Good luck throughout the summer. Thanks for your time. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a great weekend. Ruben Torres, the head coach at Marlin. Boy, they, Paul, you were around when they made that run. I covered them against one of the most – Brilliant, Lark, fast, Lark Smith and I had a dynamic couple of games. Dynamic teams yeah. I've ever covered in Atlanta in 2003. In fact, the Jeremy Sanders team got upset by Hutto, and uh, that was a that was a rough rough interview with Malone, Coach Malone, after the game. Yeah, yeah. Butler last year had 361 yards against Axtell in that game that put him in the uh, limelight for what he did. And, uh, Gullet is uh, Alabama, among others. It's, it's really cool. It's a great story. And, and, and they have worked their you-know-what's off to kind of cultivate and change the culture, whatever you want to say. And I know they probably get tired of always saying, well, you know, we're not that anymore. No, they're not. They've done a great job. They were on the edge of extinction. And look at them now. Yeah, it's almost like if you get people in there that have uh, positive mindsets and are actually wanting to do good and not be selfish, that you can turn things around no matter how dire they look. Uh, problem is that there's obviously just not great leadership for a very long time, a lot of selfishness and a lot of politics and things like that. And you bring in Sheila Henderson and with her personality and just her outlook, uh, it's been a breath of fresh air to say the least. And I, I love listening to Coach Torres talk. I think he's going to do a hell of a job just based on listening to him. And um, yeah, I'm looking, I mean, they went from zero D1 guys to like five overnight, basically. Uh, I mean, and it's not like they're just going out and, you know, if there's Red Raiders listening, I don't mean this disrespectfully. I just, tired of using Baylor all the time but like you know Texas Tech is one thing but when you're going out to the Alabama camp and like you know I mean Tech would be a big deal to Marlin anybody any offers big but like we're talking about like some of the bigger schools you know period are, are looking at Marlin Texas all of a sudden and that's just wild to me all right Craig you brought up that DeAndre Jordan or you mm -hmm. the scenario I went back and Google this and I'm gonna have a break because